Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this program, we will be going over using structures to simulate multiplication of fractions. So before we go over this code, I will just give a brief explanation of structures in C and cover some key ideas related to them and how they are typically used in programming. So what are structures? They are just a user defined data type. So as you are aware, in C, we have native data types like integers, characters, doubles, floats, and so on and so forth. Those are basic data types that already exist or are built into the programming languages libraries. Structures allow you to combine these data types and make your own so you can reference it by name. So you may be asking, why is this important? Well, suppose you want to use C to store people's health information for some reason. So you are writing a code for a hospital, for example, and they need you to store all this information. They said that they wanted to keep track of the patient's name, you know, the first and the last name, maybe their age, their address, their height, and their weight. You can use their weight and height to also perform some calculations as well. You know, maybe you want to keep track of their BMIs. Because of this, you may require different data types for each attribute of the health information of an individual person. What do I mean by this? So, for example, for the names, you may want to use strings to store that information. For the age, height, and weight, you may want to use numerical types like integers and double. In addition, like we mentioned, this also allows you to do extra calculations like find the BMI of an individual patient if that particular information is required. So this is where structures come in. Instead of defining each element before you can store an individual's health information, structures allow you to create an object that contains all these data types. So all you have to do is declare the structure you originally defined and use it as a data type every single time you want to store someone's health information. Okay, now let's go over how to define a structure in C. So taking a look at the code to define a structure, this is what you have to do. So the only thing that you need is the keyword struct an open and a closing curly braces with the elements that you want to define inside of the structure. So the keyword struct tells the compiler that a structure is about to be defined. The keyword type def um, I included here is optional. Uh, personally for me, I always include this keyword when defining structures and this is why. So C provides the keyword type def, um, which you can use to give a type a name. So we use it here to give our structure a name. So every single time that we want to use our structure again in our code, we just use the name that we gave it while declaring our structure up above. But before we do that, let us take a look into our structure object. You can see that we have two integer variables. Remember, the point of our code is to simulate multiplication of fractions. Um, to achieve this, we wanted to use structures. That is why we have two integers, one for the numerator and the second one for the denominator. As a summary, all we have done is defined our numerator and denominator of our fraction object in our struct and we call our struct fraction. That is the name that we gave our struct. We called it fraction. So simple enough. So now that we have that done, we can just use it in our code as a standalone type. Because we will be multiplying two fractions together, we declared three fraction variables, two for the input fraction and the third one to store the answer in. Okay, next thing that we have to do is collect our input fractions from the user. We will encourage our user to input their fraction into the program using the division symbol. That is why we have this format in the scanf function. By the way, if you are not sure about the scanf um, functions formatting, check out the description of this video. I made a video about the topic covering input validation and how to specify the format of your inputs using the scanf function. But moving on, after we have collected input from the user, we have to store them in their correct location hence the numerator and the denominator of our fraction. So to access the numerator of a struct object, we just write the name of the struct and use the dot operator to specify the name of whatever variable that we want to fill or access. 
So here, as demonstrated, we have fr1.numerator, fr1 being the name of our fraction object that we declared up, up above. Um, and we use the dot operator to access the numerator integer type to store the first number in the numerator variable of that particular struct. And we did the same thing for the denominator. As you can see, fr1.denominator. So lastly, this allows you to perform some computations to access the individual's elements inside of the object. Like I said, we use the same dot operator. So in our code, we can see that in order for us to actually do some fraction calculation, we used the dot operator and restored the result of our multiplication inside of our third fraction object that we just declared. So I just wanted to say that although this is a simple demonstration, um, you can see how this will be very useful when you encounter bigger programs that will require you to store a lot more information inside of a data set. Similar to the example that we covered up above, like storing the health information of a patient, for example, right? With that example, you would have to store the patient's name, first and last, their age, height, weight, and all those other informations. And maybe you also want to keep track of how many times they have been to the doctor, um, when was their last visit, and you may want to have different elements that allow you to store those individual um, attributes of that health information more efficiently, right? You wouldn't want to use a string for everything or an integer for everything. So that is what structs ultimately allow you to do. And lastly, to print out the results, the same logic applies. We use the dot operator to access each individual element um, and then print it out to the user. So that is pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to cover structs um, because I don't think I have done so on this channel. If you have any questions about this video, leave a comment down below and I will be sure to answer it or make a video about it if I think it is worth a video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the other videos that I've made on this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks and bye.